Desperate for money, director Wes Craven agreed to make a sequel to The Hills Have Eyes. However, that film would go unfinished and unreleased for a couple years. In the meantime, he was hired to make another TV movie. Susan Lucci is known for playing Erica Kane in over 1,500 episodes of the soap opera All the Children. She originated the role in 1970. Lucci's contract called for a movie of the week on ABC. According to IMDb Trivia, the hope was that it might break her into dramatic work outside of soaps and potentially earn her an Emmy nomination. Richard Rothstein wrote the script and Craven was brought on board to direct. The film aired on May 24, 1984. The movie is about Matt Winslow, played by Robert Urich. Matt is a computer genius hired to make what I can only describe as a super suit for astronauts. It can shoot lasers and fireballs, detect humans from non-humans, and whether that being is benign or malignant, it can also withstand the fires of hell. More on that later. He joins a generic big corporation and moves with his wife Patricia, played by Joanna Cassidy, and their two children, Chrissy and Robbie, played by Solel Moon Fry and Barrett Oliver, respectively, to a Californian suburb. Once there, the family receives a lot of pressure to join this mysterious club. The club offers power, money, and sexual pleasure. Lucci plays the film's villain, Jessica Jones, who is determined to get Matt and his family to join the club. Patricia and the kids agree and enter through a mysterious door. They are then replaced by unknown beings. They're violent, short-tempered, and hate puppies. Matt realizes this and dons his super suit to enter the door which leads to hell. He is able to rescue his family with the power of love, and Jessica Jones explodes. The movie is a lot better than Summer of Fear or Swamp Thing because it's actually about something. It's pretty quickly apparent that the movie wants to attack 1980s corporate America, more specifically, the American ideal. It's a criticism of Ronald Reagan's administration. The 80s were obsessed with obtaining a specific lifestyle. The ethos was that hard and demeaning work would pay off with a corporate job which would then lead to promotions, big paychecks, and fancy houses and cars. As long as you played the game correctly and hung with the right crowd, the system would work in your favor. I'm not the first to point it out, and many films have depicted it in different ways. That entire decade was filled with excess and superficiality, and the financial and societal consequences of Reagan's decisions still affect us decades later. We never quite escaped. It's a little cathartic to see a movie of that time criticizing that era's ideals. The main criticism that's brought up is the cost. Yes, the Winslows get a nice house and an expensive piano, but there's a price. Of course, now I'm perfectly willing to help. But you're gonna have to pay a price. In this instance, it's their soul. Jessica Jones is Lucifer. She takes souls not by force, but by manipulation. Everyone she takes chooses it willingly. It's a Faust tale. And all that is interesting. I got a lot more from this TV movie than I expected. Rothstein and Craven tried a lot harder than they had to. My issues are in presentation and that it's not particularly subtle. Everything that I just talked about, it's all pretty much flat out said in dialogue. I mean, I guess the word hell is never used and no one calls Jessica Jones, Lucifer, or Satan, but everything else is really on the nose. This isn't a movie that you'll rewatch and notice thematic ideas that you missed before. You're gonna get it all on the first watch. Tone is a big problem. The movie is a science fiction horror blend, and it's not particularly great at either. The movie opens with Jessica Jones being run over by a car. She stands and sets the driver on fire. Beyond the moment being really silly, there's no real suspense with her from that point on. The audience knows from the first scene that Jessica Jones is an evil supernatural being. The movie is a mystery that slowly unfolds. A lot of potential tension is thrown out the window because the movie answers the mystery immediately. So as an audience member, you're just kind of waiting for the characters to catch up on information you already have. The science fiction stuff is wildly out of place. The door to hell has a keypad. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. The super suit is just insane. And it's such a contrivance that our main character just happened to build a suit that he needs to win the day. And what is this company? It's very clearly run by Jessica Jones. Almost everyone there is a member of the club. So why are they funding this suit? What exactly are they doing? And to what end? And who takes over the people that enter the door? Are those demons? I'm guessing they just want to live outside of hell and enjoy life, but it's never dealt with or explained. Jessica Jones' motivation is clear. She gets souls. That's easy enough. 
but everything else is really muddy and the movie can't really get into it because TV movie. Or they just didn't care. Craven definitely saw television work as lower than theatrical endeavors. He said, I did draw a real line between television and features. With features, I felt like you really had to be Wes Craven. With television, you earn your money and go. I will say that the production value was solid. I was a little surprised at how good the movie looked until I realized that Dean Cundey was the DP. For anyone unaware, Cundey's best known for his work on the first three Halloween films, the Back to the Future trilogy, and the first Jurassic Park. He's one of the best DPs in the business, and that first Halloween is my favorite work of cinematography. And while it kinda sucks that the only time Craven and Cundey worked together was this, the movie looks good. Obviously, it could use a decent transfer, but there are some solid shots. There's one particular shot that used shadows well, obviously inspired by Nosferatu. Craven would later do a similar shot in New Nightmare. Weirdly, there are a lot of similarities to New Nightmare. The Faustian influence, the descent into hell, and even the TV turning on by itself gag. Hell itself looks good. It's a little basic and generic, but for a TV movie made in 1984, I think it looks great. What looks less great is the deeper level Matt jumps into. There, they just added weird color filters and it looks ugly. They very easily could have achieved the intended effect with something a little more subtle. Craven said, You could never be as crazy with television movies as you were in the theatrical films, but people would say, Oh, you make films about the supernatural, which I never felt I did, and give you these goofy things. So I got Invitation to Hell, which is, I still think, the most preposterous premise I've ever filmed. It was crazy, but to me, it was a job. The movie is a lot better than I expected it to be. I figured it would be really boring and empty like Summer of Fear and Swamp Thing. And while it is a little dull, there's not nothing here. Thematically, I like what the movie is going for. I enjoyed linking the American ideal of the 1980s with Faustian deals with the devil. The acting is good enough except for the kids, but we'll give them a pass. And I like the cinematography. Its main problem is tone. I have to agree with Craven that this movie is ridiculous. It's really the super suit. That thing is so out of place and nuts. Oh, and that keypad. I hate the keypad to hell. There's a decent story in here in which a family has to fight for their souls, but it gets lost in the weird choices that bog everything down. The movie ends up just being a fun watch for a bad movie night, which isn't the worst thing. Um.